Hi, my name is Jared and this is Horror Obsession. Today, I want to talk about Disturbia, a 2007 thriller that is so lightly horror, it is at most teenage horror. Disturbia is an interesting movie and a pretty good choice if you're looking to introduce someone who doesn't really like horror, since there are a lot of horror elements, but the movie itself isn't really all that scary. Rather than following a traditional slasher script, the movie more closely resembles Rear Window mixed with something like Summer of 84, a great little film I highly recommend you check out. The cast of Disturbia is actually not bad, notably Carrie Ann Moss as Kale's mom and David Morris as the suspicious neighbor. David Morris is a guy you will recognize from stuff but probably don't know his name. And finally, the lead is Shia LaBeouf, who would rise to prominence with the Transformers movie, released the same year as Disturbia. Shia has never been an amazing actor, but he is usually sufficient for roles like this, where he's mostly playing himself, with a scene or two sprinkled in of his attempts at real emotion, which he does passingly. He is like the Cheerios of cereal, and not Honey Nut Cheerios, which are delicious, but regular Cheerios, where if you're super hungry and don't really have much else, it's fine. But it would never be your first choice if you had a larger selection. Wait, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, Disturbia. Before we get into spoilers, I would recommend this movie. It is certainly not a good movie, but there's something kind of charming about it anyway. There's some creepy stalker stuff, which is sort of inevitable when the basic plot is a dude spying on his neighbors from his house with binoculars, and it veers dangerously close to torpedoing the entire movie with the creepiness. But for me, the movie just barely pulls back before disaster, kind of like Cookie Crisp cereal, which is dangerously close to being too sugary and becoming inedible, but doesn't quite push the envelope too far and ends up being just fine, especially with 2% milk. Disturbia starts off with Kale, played by Shia LaBeouf, who already has a weird name based on food, so let's call him Cheerio. Cheerio is out fishing with his dad and they're having a fun time even though they aren't catching very many fish. On their way home, a giant truck driving recklessly causes Cheerio to crash and tragically his dad is killed. This causes Cheerio's life to spiral, and a year later he is failing Spanish class and ends up punching his teacher for invoking his dead father's name in class in front of everyone. The judge takes pity on Cheerio because of his troubled past and places him on house arrest for three months. This sequence is a critical moment for a movie like this because the audience is going to get a real sense of what Cheerio is like based on the montage of what he spends his time doing, and Disturbia goes an interesting direction. They show Cheerio as being incredibly lazy, not helping his mom out around the house at all, doing a horrible job with his chores, and just overall being kind of a piece of shit. Normally, I dislike when movies have unlikable protagonists, and once again this movie veers dangerously close to crashing and burning, but Cheerio's mother takes away all of his technology to force him to find something productive to do. And so he starts to go outside and sees his neighbors doing things. Almost immediately, the love interest moves in next door, and Cheerio starts to obsess with her. I will give the movie credit for being realistic with this. I mean, it is a pretty well-known fact teenage boys obsess over girls, but there is a long section in the middle of the movie where they are trying to set up the love story, and it ends up coming across as too creepy, since Cheerio is, like, watching her swim and change and stuff. He even has an alarm set so he can go spy on her while she does yoga, which is, um, yeah. It comes off as really weird, though I think the movie is trying to have it come off as cute. I guess this is somewhat common in teenage love stories though. I remember the Twilight movies having a lot of stuff that's supposed to be cute come off as creepy and stalkerish, though in Disturbia it is quite literally stalker behavior. So, what does this movie have besides Cheerio stalking his neighbor? Well, Cheerio and Ronnie also spy on his other neighbors, and one of them is acting kinda suspicious, and his car matches the description of someone abducting and killing people around the state. Cheerio and Ronnie start an investigation into it, and eventually Ashley gets pulled into the whole thing, though the movie is a bit clumsy while doing so. Once the investigation gets going, the movie picks up again, and from that point on it's at its best. David Morse is very menacing in his performance, having several scenes where he is acting normal enough to deceive the police or parents or whoever, but clearly signaling to the kids he is onto them and that they should stop. The kids don't take the hint, and the whole thing spirals to a satisfying conclusion, though the route to get there is basically a straight line with minimal twists or turns. So what do I like about Disturbia? I would say the main thing is the way the movie creates the house Cheerio lives in and the neighborhoods surrounding him. They do a very good job of making the audience feel trapped in the house with Cheerio, very rarely showing anything outside the house until the other kids in on the investigation venture out for him. 
Normally, these mostly single location films feel a bit claustrophobic, but the movie does a great job of setting up the neighborhood and making sure enough is going on that it never feels stale. Cheerio's room in the upstairs of his house is also a critical element of the movie, since he has this weird, like, crow's nest room with 360 degree view of his neighborhood. The attention to detail is good here though, since Cheerio can't see every neighbor from up there. And the movie goes out of its way to make sure we know he can only see certain people from certain places within the house. And we really get a sense of what the house's layout is like, which helps with the immersion a lot. Another thing I like is the movie is surprisingly restrained. During the opening scene car crash where Cheerio's dad dies, instead of showing a horribly mangled corpse, they only show Cheerio's reaction to it, which is sufficient for the audience to know what happened, and honestly, it's a lot more powerful that way. His reaction is what matters to us for the story anyway, and also is the main source of sympathy we have for Cheerio, and so executing that scene correctly really sets the movie on the right track, and I think they nailed the opening. Another thing I like is Cheerio's descent into madness. They mentioned early on that house arrest can be really difficult for people mentally, and a lot of people break only a few days into it. The movie shows him transitioning from a kid who views this as a vacation to someone trapped and absolutely desperate for any kind of outside interaction. It starts with him calling Ronnie on a field trip just to hear what is going on, and his desperate loneliness somewhat explains his weird pervy obsession with Ashley. It makes some sense considering Cheerio's observations out his windows are driving the entire plot of the film, and the movie does an okay job of showing Cheerio moving from his obsession with Ashley to being obsessed with proving his neighbor is a serial killer. There is a good scene where Ashley has just dyed her hair, and when she goes over to see Cheerio, he is pacing like a madman. Ashley asks if he even noticed that she dyed her hair, and he passingly mentions it, but he is clearly more focused on the investigation now. This is a major shift for his character, who goes from weird pervy teenager spying on every little detail of his neighbor's life and setting alarms to watch her do yoga, to a weird pervy teenager spying on every detail of his neighbor's life to try and prove they're a killer. The movie never really shows Cheerio as being motivated by doing the right thing or trying to stop him from killing people, but rather his obsessive nature and desire to be proven right guide him throughout most of the movie. Whether or not a character like that resonates with you, I think he's written consistently and I applaud them for that. Alright, on to the negatives. Ashley starts out as an object for Cheerio's obsession and never really seems to move beyond it. The movie attempts to establish her as a real character, but the way they go about it is by having Cheerio share some of the things he's noticed about her from his constant spying. He basically mentions things which are a part of the universal human condition, like how she looks in the mirror when leaving her room, apparently to try to figure out who she is. This borders on being a platitude, but I suppose it is something that could be argued is mildly unique to her character. It is hardly groundbreaking stuff, and the rest of the characterization is even more shallow than this. I literally chose the deepest moment in the script between Ashley and Cheerio, and even that is questionable in terms of whether it is characterization or just empty nonsense. Like I said, this movie is really teenage horror, but watching it with that in mind, it doesn't bother me as much as it does for some other movies. Another negative is Carrie Ann Moss is pretty underwritten, meaning she doesn't have all that much to do, and basically the main thing we see from her is either taking away Cheerio's technology to try to force him to help out around the house, and flirting with the serial killer. This follows the main trend in Disturbia of the female characters being very underdeveloped, though to be fair there are only like 5 characters in the entire movie. Viola Davis plays the house arrest cop, and for her limited screen time I thought she was excellent. She basically steals all the scenes she is in, but I guess I'm supposed to be talking about the negatives here, not the positives. There's one negative I want to talk about in particular that I thought was hilarious. So, for some context, our three lead kids are trying to break into David Morse's house to gather proof he's the serial killer. So Ashley follows him to the store to keep an eye on him while Ronnie breaks into his car. The scene builds tension well, cross-cutting between Ashley trying to follow David and Ronnie struggling to break into the car. What is funny about the scene is the way Ashley is following David. She is just like peeking around the corner and watching him intently while on the phone. It seems kind of obvious that she should be pretending to shop, you know, the thing that people do when they're in stores, but to be fair, they're all dumb kids, so I guess she doesn't realize that. She basically creepily follows him like 10 feet back for the entire time he's in the store and watches him buy a shovel, even though later in the film when we see inside of David's house, we see he has a literal wall full of shovels. 
I get that they need him to be doing something suspicious in the store so the kids have a reason to continue their investigation, so it's fine, I guess. But I thought it was hilarious the way Ashley stalks him so obviously and then is completely surprised to find he figured it out and is waiting for her in the parking lot. Scenes like this are basically what saved the movie, since it is a quality blend of serious tension building and silly teenage hijinks, the mix of which defines the entire movie and lands really well for me. Overall, Disturbia is hardly a great movie. I wouldn't even go so far as to say it is good, but it is entertaining, and the way it builds the setting of the neighborhood and house makes it a fun watch. The female characters are underwritten, the lead is so bland he best reminds me of the most basic serial in existence, but there are some genuinely good scenes, and the movie has some interesting ideas in terms of transforming Rear Window into a teenage horror movie. There is a decent amount of cringy stuff in Disturbia, I'm not gonna lie, but once you trudge through the start of the second act and the investigation gets underway, the movie picks up again and is pretty solid the rest of the way, even for someone with a disturbing horror obsession.